Good morning and welcome. It's time for another edition of Let's Talk here on the Big Z. Mark Ellerbrock here with you in this hour. Thanks for tuning in to the show today. Beautiful day out there. Hope you can enjoy it and take us along wherever you happen to be out and about today. We have a wide-ranging show today, not just in this hour, but Jeremy will be back filling in today for Doug Jenkins in the next hour of the show. Let's talk plants as we do each and every Tuesday in the 11 o'clock hour. First off, though, we're going to kick it off talking a little politics. We will do that more and more as we head into uh, the rest of this month and October, and of course, in November, the election, and extending the invitation to uh, some of the candidates in contested races. And as they uh, reply, we'll try to book them, bring them on the air uh, for some time, uh, hopefully, if it works out. Do it live here, as we'll do this morning. Uh, otherwise, we'll record those and then bring those to you as well. But uh, on the phone with me uh, is uh, Mike Boss. He's a Republican from Murfreesboro, currently sits in the Illinois House, but he's running for U.S. Congress in the 12th Congressional District. And Mike joins me by phone from... Of all places, he's already in Washington, D.C. right now doing some business. Hello, Mike. Welcome to the Big Z. Good morning. Hi. Hi, Mark. Good to have. Good to be on with you. Thank you so much for having me on. Well, well, thank you for taking a little time out of your schedule. I guess this is part of the process. Uh, you you want to be new in D.C., and so you uh, not only tour uh, this congressional district, the 12th district, uh, that includes does include Alton and a lot of southern Illinois, but also a little uh, time out in D.C. as well, getting to know um, yeah. the Republicans, I guess. Just, just as very little as possible. Uh, this is only the second time I've been out here, and, and uh, we try to uh, uh, stay in the district since July. We've made over 140 events, uh, uh, not counting uh, uh, those times when we're just out on the street knocking door to door and doing those types. But, uh, uh, yeah, it, it, it's a big race, and it, it is taking, and, and it's been noticed by the National. Uh, it's been mentioned by several magazines uh, in D.C., uh, as well as uh, the local media is, is picking it up as one of the largest races in the nation. Uh, and here in, in southwest and central Illinois, we've got a couple of races like that. Um, Rodney Davis and Ann Callis here to the north, and, and you're taking on an incumbent a Democrat first term who succeeded Jerry Costello. So you, you've got an, an important district in that it had a lot of weight, uh, at least uh, a lot of influence uh, for, for many, many years. Uh, yes. First of all, tell our listeners a little bit about yourself, how you got into the well, Illinois House and in this race. Yes, I I was actually, uh, I'm, I'm from uh, Murfreesboro, born and raised there all my life, uh, except for three years I spent in the United States Marine Corps. I come from small business. My family started a, my grandfather started a trucking business in 1933. When I came home from the Marine Corps, I ran it for about 10 years. Uh, was got involved with local politics. Uh, and then uh, after 10 years of running that business, my wife Tracy and I, uh, uh, built a family business that is a uh, beauty salon. Uh, we always joke about the fact that uh, she does the hair and I do the books and it seems to work real well that way because you don't want me touching anybody's hair. But uh, that being said, we, uh, uh, I got involved in politics at the, the local level, uh, at a county board uh, level. I uh, uh, was not happy with what was happening at the local level. Uh, was asked to run for state rep uh, several years ago, waited uh, and then and chose to do that and ran in 92, uh, won the primary, but then lost in general. Uh, came back in 94. I was a full-time firefighter during that time as well, uh, but uh, ran and then was elected uh, in 94. Uh, been through the good years and the bad years in the state of Illinois. I was there with uh, uh, Jim Edgar's first term. Uh, we were up until the time of, of Rod Bogoyevich, uh, we were had a, a balanced budget that was uh, best case scenario. We had or worst case scenario, we were three hundred thousand dollars in the black, and uh, best case scenario was about one point two billion in the black. Uh, and worked through that time. I was a spokesman for higher education. I was spokesman for public utilities and uh, telecommunications rewrite. A uh, co-chair for that, um, and then became uh, one of the House Republican leaders as. as the uh, caucus chair, uh, where I held that. Uh, whenever I've watched what's going on in Washington, I've got nine grandkids now. My wife, Tracy, and I have three children, nine grandchildren, and just not real happy with where Washington has been headed with everything from the VA to, uh, to Obamacare uh, to uh, uh, what happens with the IRS. Uh, the list goes on and on and the concerns that I'm seeing uh, with our borders. Uh, and I thought for the sake of our nine grandchildren, somebody needed to go and at least represent our voice from Southern Illinois. 
My boss is my guest, a Republican running in the 12th Congressional District for the election coming up in November. So, Mike, this question you've probably been asked already, and I'll ask you here for the sake of our listeners. Why? Why? Why are you going to try to do something in D.C.? There, there, there's just been so much talk and discussion about how it, you know, takes newcomers and it just you just get bogged down well, in that, that the, the beltway. So t- talk about that a little and bit. And let me let me let me tell you this. That was a major decision, and it was a major decision for my family as well because they've been around the process in Illinois. They know uh, what goes on there. Uh, Now, it would have been probably just as easy to throw my hands up and say, nope, never mind, everybody's just, it's all going to fail and and walk away. But I just told you I got nine grandkids. Mm -hmm. And if, if, if someone doesn't stand up and start being very vocal on what it is that needs to be cured, that doesn't mean that that, uh, that that well, we we have to stop this government that has run amok that doesn't pay attention to the people who sent it there originally. Uh, I think our elected officials quite often get to D.C. and forget where they came from. Uh, I, you know what? I know exactly where I came from. Mm. I come from Murfreesboro, Illinois. I know what Southern Illinoisans believe. I know what our issues are. I know the concerns that we have. And somebody's got to be that voice. And I'm willing to offer myself up to be that voice, and it's my hope that the that the constituents of the 12th district will send me. And, and Mike, the, on on that comment, some might say, "Okay, that's fine," but you know, it's not just the Democrats; it's the Republicans too that get to Washington and forget. Do you do you, do you see that, or have you oh, felt that too? Sure. What, the, what what's the best example of that? Sure. Eric Cant Eric Cantor, because that's what happens when you forget your district and forget where you came from. He was so busy focusing on working through the leadership ranks that, you know, bang, it, yeah. it, they, they thought, oh, yeah, he's going to win. Well, it's it, not if you don't answer to the people that sent you. And that's what I – I understand that. I understand that if elected, when elected, that my job is to keep in constant contact with the constituents that I represent, everybody from the farmers uh, to the people who work at, uh, uh, at, at the refinery to the steel mills. Uh, to SIU and, and, and all the other, uh, Scott Air Force Base, all of those areas throughout the 12th District that are that need to be represented and need to have their voices heard. And you've got to do that. The way to do that is you've got to provide a constituent service so that you're in constant contact. I think that's where we've fallen short over the last, ever since Jerry Costello left. Uh, you 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 cut your district uh, and all those things you mentioned there. I mean, you, you talk about uh, major universities, major industry. Uh, you've got schools and 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 urban areas and, and farm areas. So you, you kind of have a little bit of everything in your district. What what are you hearing back from? What are you hearing back from constituents on the things that they want you, well, if elected, to focus on? Well, let me let me tell you that if you're looking at the big picture, people are not happy with uh, a piece of legislation that was passed now. The question is, do we repeal and replace, or what do we need to do with Obamacare? Uh, the reality is is that people are not happy whenever you have someone that speaks up and says, oh, we're going to pass it so we find out what it does. That, that, that's not the way, that, that's not what we send our elected officials to do. They, For silly me, I, I think we should read the bills. You know, that's what, what happened in, in Springfield whenever uh, uh, they tried to pass the 198-page bill uh, that would was uh, drafted over in the middle of the night and then handed to us 10 minutes before committee. That doesn't make sense. But at, that is the bigger picture, the, those type things, the, the protecting of the border, uh, the uh, dealing with the foreign affairs. These are all issues that on the national level you have to deal with. But also with that is a mix of a, a mixed bag. For instance, uh, when we start talking about the, the pipeline that the president keeps holding up, uh, understand where that pipeline is. That pipeline ends, it has a Y off in Wood River, and the stopping point is just north of Mount Vernon. Those are both in the Illinois 12. That's an important job opportunity for Southern Illinois, and we should be, whoever our representative is, has to be standing up against the president and say, let's get it started, let's get the work going. Likewise, uh, whenever we had the problem with uh, what's known as dumping in the, uh, uh, in, in the steel industry, which is not actually... It's when the administration is not actually putting the tariffs in place to stop uh, low-grade, low-cost steel from being dumped into our markets and reducing the cost price uh, that we receive from uh, from like the all or from the uh, uh, from Granite City steel. That could hurt. That can hurt our employees. That can hurt our jobs. 
uh, when you come on farther south. Scott Air Force Base must be protected, must be maintained as the central hub, which it is, not only of the Air Force, but of all transportation nationwide comes through Scott Air Force Base. So, so uh, the legislator has to be aware of that. And then when, when we start talking about farming issues, the concern that, that the EPA is is with these, uh, what is navigable waterways and, and what, what waters, uh, the, the waters are uh, protected and what waters are controlled by the federal government and what state and local. And uh, as these arguments go on, you've got to understand what you're arguing for. Also, when we start talking about the coal and oil industries, which is a, a large section of, the, of our 12th district, to, to understand that 42 percent of the, of the electricity in the state of Illinois is produced by coal. Had the, had the EPA had the opportunity to pass and move forward with the language that they were wanting to do that the courts have now held up, we could have, we could have had that much of our, of our uh, grid uh, the power that goes into our grid removed. Yeah. So, you know, you, you've got to be aware of all these issues. Mike, we have just a short time left here, so let me ask you what what sets you apart from your uh, your, your primary opponent, the Democrat uh, incumbent in this race, Bill Enyard. What, what sets the two of you apart? What 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 is the difference people will see I think, if elected? I, I, I think the ability to keep in constant contact and run a staff that has the ability to constantly work. Uh, one thing that you need to know is, is that... Uh, and. I will work all the time, not when I just have an opponent. He never had a town hall meeting until I started running against him. He never had, and then, and then when he has congressmen on the corner, which is a time to go out and meet with the constituents, he doesn't go, he sends his staff. I believe that the only way that you can represent the people is understand that as a servant's position and to be the proper servant is you've got to be in touch with the people. I don't think he's done that, especially, uh, well, he's de- definitely not doing it to the level I would do, and he's definitely not doing it to the level that we became accustomed to over the last one. Mike Boss is my guest, Republican of Murfreesboro, running for Congress in the 12th Congressional District. Our short visit here today. We'll try to catch up with Mike uh, sometime down the road before the election again. Thanks for your time today, Mike, and uh, best Thank of luck Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it so right. much. Thanks, Mike. Mike Boss, the Republican this morning. Again, we appreciate his time this morning on the Big Z. And again, we extend that invitation to others running for